everyone welcome this is wicked things i am tara lynn i am the artist behind paint rinse repeat and i am super excited to paint with you this evening um so before we get started i'm going to push this on just a little bit there we go uh, before we get started i will go over the supply list uh, with you and we will work step by step on this uh, black cat here and um, one of the things that i love about painting on a black canvas is that all of the blackness kind of um, shows through some of these more transparent colors it gives it a really fun effect so um, i'm going to move my sample since i've got him up on the screen there uh, so where can i put this guy right there all right, so first things first, we're create, creating on a black canvas this evening. So if you have not yet painted your canvas black, uh, go ahead and pause the video and do that. And then you can rejoin. Um, that'll help us all be on the same page here. Um, as far as colors go, I will be using white. Uh, black is mostly for the the back of the canvas, but in case you need to touch any up, you'll need some black. Um, I've got red, nice bright red. I've got magenta. I use my magenta um, basically just to change up the colors of the roses a little bit. Um, Payne's gray. Payne's gray is a deep dark navy. Um, it's a it's a good neutral to use um, when you don't want to use a, a deep dark black. Um, a lot of times in nature, our shadows are not actually black. Um, so I use Payne's Gray a lot for that, but that'll give us a nice um, uh, different color to use since we're working on black. I have two colors of green. I've got my sap green, green oxide, and um, I've got a light green. If you don't have two greens, you can always lighten one up with a little bit of white or yellow. Um, and then I've got violet and yellow. So those are the colors I'll be using this evening. Of course, you can change up any of the colors that you want to. Um, and this, uh, once you get the transfer, transferred is surprisingly easy uh, to paint. <clears throat> A lot of the work is done for us since we have the black canvas. All right, so I'm going to work on my kitty cat first, and I'm going to need black and some of my Payne's Gray. Shake that up. And some white. As far as brushes go, um, I most often use a small, medium, and large flat brush and a small, medium, and large round brush. Um, but you can paint with whatever really whatever you're comfortable with here. Reorganize some of this. My space is kind of messy today. I hate when my space is messy. There we go. All righty. Oops, let me put this under here because I know there will be a little bit of a glare. Sorry guys, I always feel like I'm organized and then I gotta reorganize. <laughs> um, all right, there we go. All right, so for our kitty cat, um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with some deep dark shadows and we're gonna build our way upward. So I've got my tracer lines for kitty cat here and I'm gonna take um, a round brush and some of this Payne's Gray. Now, if you don't have a Payne's Gray, um, that's okay. What I would recommend is taking some of your black and just going a pinch lighter, um, not very much lighter at all. So when I say a pinch, I mean adding just the smallest amount of white, um, teeny tiny bit. We just want it to be a slight shade darker. So what I'm gonna do um, is wherever I've got these white outlines, and I'm not going to worry about um, the nose and the eyes, but 
wherever I've got some of these white outlines, I'm first going to go over it and then I'm just going to add some just furry little brush strokes. So we're going to start hiding this outline. Um, and I can tell you to the camera, there's not a big difference between the black and the Payne's gray. You'll be able to see it because it's you know, kind of wet against that matte black there. Um, but to the eye, there is a big difference. But when we're finished, we don't want to see any of that white. So I'm just going over that line and then just kind of scuffing that line out a little bit. Because in any painting, we definitely do not want our tracer lines, right? So we're going to start to hide those. So if you are live with me tonight, feel free to say hello. I know we had a few people sign up and message me and said they weren't going to be live and that's totally fine. They were going to watch on the replay. So that is our darkest color there. Um, next, I'm going to grab a little black and a little white, and I'm going to create a medium to dark gray. I want it to be lighter than the black, but still close to the black range. Um, and as long as this is and I can mix some of that Payne's gray in there. As long as this is on the, on the darker end of the spectrum, that's totally fine. So I'm going to take this deeper color and I'm just going to kind of add in some shadow here. Might even darken it just a pinch. Right around his chest. And then down here by his the bottom of his feet, adding a little bit of shadow. And there's some roses here, so kind of avoiding those roses a little bit. Now down here by his belly, still pretty dark. Right down the middle of his nose. I'm going to do a triangle in his ears, kind of leaving the center of those ears empty, but we can always blacken that later if we need to. So adding kind of just the next shade of this shadow. And down here behind his head, he's going to have a little shadow as well. And then little by little, we're going to lighten this. So. I'm going to need more paint, but I'm going to lighten this gray just a bit. And now it's going to become pretty important that we follow the lines of this guy's body. I'm 
All right, so I want it to be lighter than what I was just using. And then down here, um, you can kind of see by the, where I've got the, the wetness here. So down here on his arm, I'm gonna start adding, it's gonna look like highlight, but it's still pretty dark. Adding a little color here, um, underneath his chin into his chest, I'm gonna put one line down and then we're gonna kind of fan that out. Um, around the tail, I'm gonna put this lighter color wispy around the top and then you can kind of bring it right off. His little tail curves off the edge of the canvas. Um, now for his body, a lot of this fur is just short, quick strokes to the left side of the canvas there. And I'm just kind of following the shape of his body here. This is still a shadow color, it's still pretty dark. Now we're gonna work around his face a little bit. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is up at the very crown of his head, I'm just gonna create some loose fur strokes upward on the inside part of his ear I'm just going to create kind of a straight line I don't need a whole lot of fur right there but at the end I'm going to tuft it up just a little bit and then coming down on the other side of the triangle I do want this to be a little furry so just a few tufts of fur there Same thing over here, just a few little tufts of fur. Um, we're gonna add this fur, just pulling out around his face. I don't need a whole lot of paint on my brush because it's okay if some of this, um, these brush lines end up being a little scratchy, right? It helps with the fur texture. Now, once I've got these uh, colors around the outside, this highlight around the outside. I'm going to add another ring around this guy's face with this color. Now even though right now this seems uh, like a very light color, it's not. This is one of our shadow colors still. Right. Now, um, where we make the brush strokes and uh, the direction is super important on this guy's face. Um, so right above the eye, he's got some eyelashes, but I'm going to follow the shape of those eyelashes. And it's kind of a right um, angle. So I'm going to go up towards the middle and then towards the left on this side. I'm going to kind of follow that right angle. Underneath his eyes, I'm going to give some swoops, almost like upside down rainbows. And then right under his nose, he's got this, you know, kind of where his whiskers come out, his upper lip there. I'm going to follow the shape of that upper lip. I'll just give a swoop or two down there on his chin. All right, I'm going to add a little more white, and this is going to lighten quite a bit. So, what I want here is the medium gray. I want to be about halfway between black and white. And so you can add some white into that mix until you get what you would consider about halfway. And this is a pretty drastic change from what we just did. So when we start using this color, you're gonna notice. You're really gonna notice on this black canvas. 
All right, I think I am almost there. And the trick of making black cats is really just a lot of layers with these different colors. Um, so for this first part, I'm gonna get a nice small round. And I'm gonna dip into this medium gray. Um, and I am just going to, wherever I've got some furry swoops, I'm gonna come in there and just give a little accent to those. So I've got some over here. And yours don't have to be the same as mine, right? We're just highlighting some of this fur on this guy. highlight right here at the bottom of his nose little accent where his mouth is and his chin All right, at the base of the ear, I'm gonna add some little furry strokes upward into that triangle shape of the ear. Kind of going right um, from the inside of that triangle by the eye upward. A couple just fun highlighty strokes with this medium color down the leg maybe on his right shoulder here but really gonna add some accents to this chest area and then I'm also going to add some accents on his furry back here and then just a few on the tail now where his body is I'm going to keep most of these lighter accents towards the top um, as it gets down towards the bottom of course he's going to have more shadow this cat dry um, and we're gonna move on to the skull so it's we're gonna work on the cat the skull and then the roses all right for the skull obviously we're gonna need some white my white's a little messy but that's okay um, most of this will clean up um, so basically we need to add our first coat of white in here and so I want you just to kind of find your shape we're gonna leave the eyes black the nose is also going to be black so I'll go around the nose And once you get your outline, we're just gonna fill this in and we're gonna work fairly quickly because we're gonna blend in some gray as we go. So give yourself a nice thick coat of this white Oops, now is not the time for thin paint. If you mess up your eye like I went kind of haphazardly, 
there. I can always fix that with black, so. All right, there is um, some skull down here as well. So um, what I'm going to do is just kind of add that in. All right, most of that's covered by roses. Anyhow. All right. Now, this is another reason why I did the medium gray first and then we're gonna um, do the white of the skull because now we're gonna dip in some of this gray. So don't need to clean my brush because we're blending. So I dipped in my medium gray and I'm just gonna add, blend that in right up here at the top of the skull. And then, right next to your eyes, almost like you're giving the skull a little eyeshadow. Right up here, we've got some dark gray, or some of that medium gray, but we're adding a shadow right there. Um, on the underneath of the eyes, that little part that's kind of covered by the roses there, and we're blending this in. Our white should still be pretty white or wet. <laughs> wet, white, white, wet. So we can let that dry. We'll come back to that in a bit. But get your shadows how you like them. All right. So we're going to let that dry and go back to our kitty cat. All right, I'm gonna get my small brush um, and I'm gonna dip into my black. And there are some areas of kitty cat here that I'm really gonna darken. So um, right up here on the top of his forehead, I'm gonna add in just some furry brush strokes across the top. It's pretty dark there. Um, on the outside edges, I'm gonna add, of his face, I'm gonna add a little black um, that would typically be a little shadowy. But as I add that black in, I'm just adding small little brush strokes. All right, his nose is down here at the base of that highlight. And I'm going to make that nose nice and black. Underneath his top lip, I'm going to add a little curve of black. So I did his little nose here. Underneath this highlight, I added a curve. I can kind of blend that down a little bit because there'd be a shadow there. Right underneath that chin, adding another layer of shadow because his chin would provide that, right? Right in the ears, I just want to make sure there's some darkness in there. If you feel like there's areas where you went a little crazy on the highlight, um, you can always add some furry brush strokes with the black and it'll break up some of that highlight color.
The more brush strokes you add in here, the more realistic it's going to seem. So right now I'm just playing with the black, adding kind of that, that extra layer in there. All right, um, for the eyes, this might seem kind of weird, but the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to outline the bottom shape of that eye and that little V with some white. And I'm still using my teeny tiny brush here. The part of the reason that we do that is because we want um, the green and the yellow of the eye to actually show up. Now I need some yellow, but the only place I'm using yellow is the eye. So just a teeny tiny bit of yellow and a teeny tiny bit of the light green, although I am going to use this on my roses too. All right. So I'm going to add in my yellow first. Now this white may be still a little wet and that's fine. Um, so I'm going to add the yellow to pretty much the whole eye. If it picks up and blends with some of that white, that's fine. I don't need the eyes to be completely one color there, and actually it looks a lot better if they're not. All right, then I'm going to dip in my green, and up at the top of the eye, I'm going to blend a little bit of that green in. And how much green you add is totally up to you. Then across the top of the eyelid here, um, I'm going to clean that up with just a little swoop of black, kind of giving him a or her. noticeable eyelid and then I'm going to take some white and swoop down on the left side of each eye that just gives it a little highlight there There's a little highlight on the tip of the nose so while I've got my white out just gonna add that right there while we're working in white I'm gonna go ahead and give him his whiskers so get a nice thin white um, liner or round brush and I'm just gonna flick out from um, where the whiskers um, come out. And that's going to be right below the nose, um, kind of where that upper lip is. So I'm going to flick the top ones out. And then two more on the bottom. It's funny um, when you make these cats, how just the tiniest little difference changes their expression because this guy's a little different than, than my first one. Um, all right. I'm gonna go back to this medium gray here and I'm gonna add with the medium gray some whiskers above the eye. And they follow the shape of kind of that, that triangle there. All right, 
Then I'm going to go back to my white. So I'm going to add a whisker or a hair flick here and there. Um, just adding these little white highlights on the lightest parts are going to give him a little, little judge. So line here, there on the tail. Line or two on the body. Totally up to you. A little, little flicker here on his chin. And then I can add one or two eyebrow hairs and white as well. <laughs> this little face is cracking me up because it's totally, his expression's totally different from my sample. All right, we're gonna come back to uh, the highlights and lowlights on the skull. Uh, but what we're going to do is our first layer of color on these roses. And so I'm going to get out my darker green and my red. Now red, you're going to notice, um, regardless of the brand, um, is transparent. Red, red uh, pigment is naturally transparent pigment, um, which works to our favor in this scenario. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the colors of the, or fill in the shape of these roses just completely with a thin to medium coat of this red. If some of that black shows through, that's kind of what we're going for. So just filling in the petals, not the leaves. As you do this, make sure you cover any outline lines that you might have. You still want to be able to see them, but we want to start hiding that color. And you'll see as we get going with these roses that these are just kind of guidelines for you. As long as you get some of these shapes, similar type shapes in there, they really will end up looking like roses. Especially as we layer upwards. Where I have these roses, totally just random. You know, I just placed them in where I thought they should go. So if you want to add, um, you know, more roses, that's totally fine. If you want to change the shape of your roses, that's totally fine. Don't stress about the, the shape of these roses or the placement. So I got my first and my darkest layer of red. I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to do the same thing with my dark green. I 
I'm going to figure out the placement of my leaves, my rose petal, not my petals, but my rose um, leaves. And this is going to be the darkest layer, so it's okay if you can see some of that black through there. just filling in space. Fill some of these green things wherever you feel like they're necessary. There's no right or wrong, it's just, just some flowers. All right, now this is some very, like I said, you can see the black through this. That's kind of what we want. This is our darkest shadow layer of our flowers. Um, so we're going to let some of this flower stuff dry. We're going to go back into the skull. So um, I'm going to add, I'm just going to go right into this medium gray. Up at the top here, I'm just going to add a few little swoops. Um, just add some shadow line. Again, down here on the side. Over here on the side. Um, underneath here darker shadow and the ridge of that um, eye socket there just two little flicks upwards um, I'm going to uh, clean up and darken my eyes there so this is just with black I lost the shape here, I went a little wild with my white, so um, I'm going to widen my eye sockets just because I lost that. Cleaning up that nose a little bit. All right, now while I have a nice thin paintbrush, I've got my black paint. I'm going to add just a few darker highlights. I've got my thin brush here, so um, 
right here where that eye socket is, just adding a little flick of black. I want to accentuate the jaw here. Down here, there's supposed to be like teethy, teethy like things. So just kind of adding in a little bit of curve down here. And this is not necessarily an anatomically correct stall. I don't know if I've got all the, the ridges and such the way they're supposed to be, but it looked like a skull to me, so I was happy. So just adding some touches of black to kind of accentuate parts of that skull. All right, we are gonna add some um, brightness to the flowers. So I'm gonna get a small round brush, clean it off good. All right, I'm gonna get just a little bit of this uh, magenta. I don't need a lot. I'll probably end up with more than I need. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull a little magenta and a little red parts, mix them together, and add just the tiniest pinch of white. Just going to lighten that a wee bit. still definitely want it to look um, like a red. We want to have some pigment in there. You can see next to the red, it's lighter, uh, but there's still lots of pigment, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into these shapes and if you can see them, great. If not, um, we're just gonna kind of wing it. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna start with this rose here and I'm just going to kind of find the center and wiggle waggle it out. Down here my center is kind of lost, so just kind of building. Oh. When we make a rose, um, we're going to find the center no matter where it is and you can kind of just spiral it out and then begin adding large petals around it. If you can see your lines, you can just go right over those and that's fine. If you can't see your lines, then just Make a center of your rose, like this one here I lost a little bit, so kind of make a center. And then you just kind of spiral it out. And then start adding layers of petals out of that spiral. And eventually you get to the end of the edge of that flower. Again. Center, spiral, the idea here, what we're doing is we're just adding a lighter layer in here. Center, spiral, larger petals. center, spiral, and it's a messy spiral, and then just a few large petals. Now I've got two roses here that are buds, and the way that I do that is I'll add a little, almost like a cinnamon roll spiral on top, 
offset line to one side and then I just outline it. So same thing here, a little cinnamon roll on top. Offset line down the center or off from the center and then the outside. So it's almost like we just put the darker color on, then we outlined it. And now what I'm gonna do is I can dip right back in this red and I'm gonna kind of smudge some of this bright color in here into these petals, just wherever it feels right. You know, not, it doesn't have to be on every petal, just brightening some of that up that second layer of white and I'm you know being quick about it we're just adding in some bright color just smudging it in right on top of where the first coat of red was so little dabs little smudges go quick go abstract it's okay what I mean here just um, I, I'm not coloring book filling in that space I'm just adding an, you know a smudge or two a line or two of that brighter color in there so we've got the darker color over the whole thing in the background we've got that lighter that pinkish outline and then I just smudged in some of that pure red there um, and if you want to add some more variation I'm gonna lighten this pink red up a little bit um, adding more white I'm just getting a really light tone if you want you can kind of go through and just accent see how quickly I'm going it's just smudge 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 the more variations you add in a painting the more interesting it is usually You can see those lines are quick, they're sloppy, they're broken. It just kind of adds to the texture of the rose. Um, now for these green bits, I've got my dark green. Oops, I'm going to do I'm kind of going to do the same thing um, as I did with the roses. So I had a layer of dark and now I'm just going to come through with my light green um, and lighten some of this up. And the way that I like to do this is I'll get a lot of dark green on my brush, pick up a little bit of, or a lot of light green on my brush, pick up a pinch of that dark green. So double load it. So I've got both colors on there, but I've mostly got light green. Um, and then I can just kind of come through and you know, smudge some, some highlights on there. Um, if it gets too bright, I can always just go back and Add a little bit of that dark green. But I'm just touching in some highlights on the green petals that I added. So I kind of just follow the shape that I already made. highlights like I said if you go too bright with that highlight you can always just dip right back into that dark green and tone it down a bit I kind of like having both in there but if there's anywhere you feel like you want a little bonkers just tone it down with a little bit of that dark green the idea is to have some of that green darkened by the black um, some of it highlighted by the light green. So 
that we have kind of all tonal variation. And then while I'm working with my greens, I'm going to take a little bit of this dark green and just add a, a pinch of it up here in the eye. And that is it friends. So from here on out, it really is just your finishing touches. Um, a lot of this painting was done um, just by leaving the background black. So um, on my original here, um, I added some glitter in the background. Um, I ended up not being real crazy about that, so I didn't include it with the lesson. Um, but you could add glitter um, you know, maybe in the eyes, you could add sparkle on the red flowers. I mean, you can really make it your own um, in whatever way you want to. It's interesting to see kind of the facial expression of the cats. Let me get my sample off here. Um, between the two different kitty cats. Um, I always tell people, especially when they're painting with me here in person, um, that no two versions of the same painting are ever exactly the same. Um, the way that you make your brush strokes is different just depending on um, your mood for the day, depending on um, you know, how you're viewing it. The things that um, you're focusing on that particular day could be different than when you made your other painting, or in my case, when I made my other painting. Um, so for example, today, my highlights are a little different. Um, you know, I just chose to accent different things. This guy seems to have a little longer fur where this guy was more of a short fur, short haired cat. Um, I added lighter highlights on these roses. So um, always embrace uh, your personal differences. That's what makes your painting beautiful. Um, thank you so much for joining me. The last thing I'm going to suggest is that you add um, your signature or um, your, your mark on your painting so everybody knows that it's yours. And I didn't do it on my original, so I'm going to do that now. There we go. Um, and I just want to take a minute to say thank you so much for painting with me tonight. This was a really fun design. Um, when I first drew it up, it had been brewing in my head for a while. I was kind of thinking about it since the beginning of the year and I was waiting for the right time. Um, and Halloween is certainly the right time um, for black cats. So anyway, um, I would love if you would share your version with me on social media, on Facebook, Instagram. You can tag me at Paint, Rinse, Repeat or hashtag Paint, Rinse, Repeat and I will see your beautiful painting. Um, I can't wait to see it. Uh, also, if you have not already, you can join me um, in our free Facebook group. Um, it's facebook.com slash groups slash Paint, Rinse, Repeat. Um, you can share anything that you make with me in there as well as original creations. And we've got a really kind group. Um, everybody loves seeing all the different paintings that people share. So I would love to welcome you there. It's free to join. Um, and then I always like to give a shout out to my supporters. Um, I offer a supporter subscription. It is $9.99 a month. Um, and it includes everything that I plan online for the month. So there are some months you can choose from five or six designs. Sometimes there's even up to seven. Um, you can participate live or you can participate on the replay. So um, for those of you who are looking for a little accountability um, with your creative time, uh, looking for ways to get past the blank canvas, this is a good opportunity. Um, it's a super low price so that it is accessible for most people. So I would love to welcome you to my supporters membership. And um, I always like to say thank you for my to my supporters who join me on every lesson because um, I appreciate you so much. It's because of you that I get to be creative all the time. Um, so thank you again for joining me. 
Um, and I will see you next time, everybody. Have a great night.